Okay, so let's move on to this question. The function f is defined by f of x equal to this. Now x can take any values, that is great. Part 1. We have to find the set of values of x for which this is true. So pretty easy. We have x squared minus 3x more than 4. Send this over here. You have x squared minus 3x minus 4 is more than 0. Again, we have seen this kind of question many, many times. We just have to first find the critical values. We factorize. That will be x 4 times 1. To get minus 3, we have to have minus 4 plus 1. x will be minus 1. x will be Again, these are the critical values. These are not your answer yet. We have to use the graph. The shape here is 1, right? It is in this shape. Minus 1, this has to be 4. This is the line 0. Now we need the values to be more than 0, have to be over here and over here. So the values of x could be x have to be less than minus 1, x have to be more than 4. So these are the set of values of x for which that is possible. That is part one of the question. Again, these questions, we have seen this many, many times before in add math. Now let's move on to part two. Express f of x in the form of this, stating the values of a and b. So pretty easy, one by one, step by step. So at first we have x squared minus 3x. So after we confirm the coefficient of x squared is 1, we move to the next step, which is we write this down, same thing. Then we have to add something. We add the value here, which is just 3, divide by 2, square. Now when you add something, you also have to div minus, sorry, minus the same thing, so you don't change the equation. That will be the same thing. Right. Now for this one, this can be simplified. It will become, here we have x, that will be x. Here we have minus, that will be minus. Here we have 1.5. And here we have square. Here we have minus 1.5 square. What is 1.5 squared? You will have, what, 2.25. So here it is, x minus 1.5 squared minus 2.25. So now by comparison, x minus a squared minus b. So from this you can see a have to be 1.5 and b have to be 2.25. That is part two of the question. Now for part three, write down the range of f. The range are the y values of f, so we kind of, kind of have to know an idea what is the shape of the curve. Now again, the reason why the question was asked after this one, it means usually means we can use this one to find the answer. So we kind of have to know that the value here at the end here is your minimum value. So here we have minus 2.25 as the minimum value here. The shape of the graph is what? It is something like this. So the graph will be something like this. Now, the shape of the graph, I mean the range obviously will be always more or equal to this value. So y has to be more or equal to the value of minus 2.25. Now this is done for the range. The range is, has to be more than this value. Again, we have to use the previous sign. We don't have to, but the reason why we use it is because it is just helpful, right? Now again, always when you have your equation expressed in this form, the value at the end is the minimum or the maximum value. Now because we know that the shape of this graph is a minimum curve, the value at the end will be a minimum value. The shape is something like this, and this value is the value that we have here at the end, and we know this will always be going up from this point, and that will be my range for that function f. Now part four, state with reason, whether f has an inverse or not, obviously it does not have an inverse because it is not a one-to-one -one function. So what does that mean? If I were to draw a line here, it meets at two points. Because of that, it is not a one-to-one -one function. So you can say no, uh, not one-to-one -one function. It is only one mark. Okay, now let's move on to the last question. So we are given that g of x is equal to this, right? We have to solve this equation. So here we have x minus 3 root of x is equal to 10. So let's try to solve this equation. So we have to know something here. What is x root of x? It is x power half. Right. Um, something we can do is that to eliminate this uh, thing, or we can just think of something else. Mm, so let's try to make this first. Let's send this over here. 
or we can just replace it honestly we can do many things uh, let me do that let me just make this easier for you let u equal to this how about this much easier for you right now what is x x is simply x half 2 right now this is u now that will be u square minus 3u minus 10 is 0 now you can see this is much easier to solve so we can just factorize u and u that should be 5 times 2 for 10 minus 3 should be minus 5 plus 2 finally u will be the value of 5 and u will be the value of minus 2 but now again we're not trying to find the value of u we're trying to find the value of of x that will be x half will be 5 x half will be minus 2 so this half so we have to square both sides you will have the x that will be 25 x will be the value of 4 this is the values of x that we have for this equation now before we uh, wrap up this question uh, i did realize there's a mistake here as well you can see this x power half is root of x is equal to minus 2 which is simply not possible root of something um, cannot be minus 2 at least not here so this answer will not be be taken seriously so we'll have only one value here x equal to 25 will be the answer of the question and that will be a question in relation to functions